Welcome back. So in this session, we're going to look at sinusoidal inputs for ordinary differential equations of order one. So here, in question one, you're, used to use, you're asked to use complex techniques to solve x dot plus kx equal cosine of omega t. Here, k and omega are constants. This is of ODE of first order. Uh, and the sinusoidal input is referring to the right-hand side of the ODE, where basically the f we are forcing a system with a function that is sinusoidal of angular frequency omega, which means basically a period of 2 pi over omega. So you're, used to, you're asked to use complex techniques to solve this in question A. In question B, we're asked to use what we had in question A to solve this modified function, where again we have a sinusoidal input on the right-hand side with an additional amplitude f, which is now constant. In the third part, we're asked to use superposition principle to solve this combined equation, where now we're introducing a value, for example, for f, which is 3. And you can see also that the right-hand side is also a sinusoidal input because it's a linear combination of sinusoidal functions. All these equations are linear with constant coefficients, and hence superposition principle would hold. So why don't you stop the video, take a few minutes, and work through the problems, and we'll be back. Welcome back. So what is it that we're asked to do here? We're asked to solve this using a trick that you learn in class to basically convert a real valued ODE into a complex form. So in the first, the first thing to do is to realize that the first thing to do is to realize that the cosine of omega t is simply the real part of the imaginary complex exponential i omega t. So when, when we realize that and we see that the ODE is real valued linear, we can convert this real value ODE into these complex valued ODE. So from this point, and we're going to label this equation star, from this point we can go back to the techniques that we learned in class, namely the integrating factor, to realize that we can rewrite the right-hand side in this form, introducing a new function u, so that we need to seek a function u that will then recover this function, this equation, and from previous recitations and problem, we saw that clearly the u that we would need to pick is just exponential of kt. Okay? So now from this, we basically have, we're back to i omega plus k the whole thing t on the right hand side, and here z u prime that we just need to integrate on both sides. So this is simply kt z on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we're integrating. Again, it's just still an exponential, even though it's complex. And we need to introduce, of course, constant of integration. So the solution for the equation star is then, I'm going to write it up here so that we keep that for the rest of the problem, minus t minus kt when I divide by this. And here, the minus kt of this exponential is going to be canceled out by the integrating factor. OK, so we're going to keep that here. So here, I gave the general solution with the solution that would come from the homogeneous equation, 
which we could refer to also as a transient here because basically after a long time t, this exponential, if k is positive, would decay. And the, solu the part of the solution that comes from the sinusoidal input or the forcing, which would be a particular solution. So to go back to the original question, we were asked to solve this real valued equation. So from what we noticed above, we saw that the right hand side is just a real part of the right hand side of the complex value equation star. And similarly, then we can do the same for the actual solutions themselves. X is also just a real value of this complex number. So here for this general solution, I'm going to just use C bar for general complex co constant here. Uh, and in this case, we will take the real value. So at this point, we don't really, doesn't really matter what C is. It's just we're going to keep it as a constant. And now it's just real valued. That's for the one part. And then we need to take the real part of this expression. I'm going to come back to the line here. So to take the real part of this expression, you learn that basically you just need to multiply the denominator, the numerator, by the complex conjugate for, and that will only give us so we have k minus i omega over the squares and and then again, Euler formula that we saw in a previous recitation. So x from this expression is just a real part of all of this. So it's going to be this term, which I let me factorize the denominator. And then the result of multiplying the two complex parts as well, i dot i minus 1. And so that answers the part A of the question, the part A of the problem. So if we look at part B, I'm just going to do it here. Part B, we're asked to, to solve a very, very similar equation. And I'm just going to leave the F out for now. It's basically the same equation, except that the input now is a sine instead of a cosine. So we can use the same trick as we used for question A by realizing that now the sine is just the imaginary part of the exponential. The complex exponential. So we don't need to redo all the work. We only need to, if we were considering this equation, to just take the imaginary part of the solution that we just found here. And we can just read off the solution from this, from this line. Um, note that in this expression, I left out the homogeneous part, which I should add here, from here. And this was just the complex part. So to come back to what I was saying, the sign is just the imaginary part of the complex exponential. So we're just going to just write down the solution by reading off here. So again, we have the homogeneous part, which would be another real valued constant. And then the real part of this expression. One over k squared plus omega squared. And its imaginary part then would give us a k sine omega t and a minus omega plus omega t. So this would be the solution for part b if we had this equation. But we actually have an equation with an additional amplitude f. And what this leads to is just an additional constant that would appear then for this solution. And we could see that if we rewinded the way we solved in part A and saw that introducing constant, constant f to the equation is equivalent to just multiplying the full equation with f. And then in the integrating factor, 
uh, part, we would end up with an F in front of our solution when we are doing the integration. And so basically, that amplitude could be absorbed in the constant of integration for the uh, homogeneous part. And the F would gen just remains in the particular solution. Here. So for the last part of the problem, we were now used we we're now you asked to use the superposition principle to combine to combine solutions of two previous ODEs that we could split from this equation. And what was it? Cosine omega t plus three sine omega t. So you saw from previous recitations that superposition principle applies for linear equations. This is clearly a linear equation. And here on the right-hand side, we have two sinusoidal functions. Because it's linear, we can look at this by splitting it into two equations. And I'm just introducing x1, x2 as notation to distinguish between the two. And here we can recognize that we already did this work that was in part A, and we already did this work in part B, where f now has a value of 3. And so what this is telling us, because it's a linear equation, we can use superposition principle. The solution, if you were to do the addition of these two equations, would just be the sum of the two previous solutions that we found. So this would be our x3, if I had labeled this with a 3. And so basically, the solution is simply the sum of the two previous forms. And so we would end up still with our c minus kt, which is basically the homogeneous part that we obtained in the two previous part, which is common. And then we just need to add to add each particular solution introduced by in part A and part B. So if I have room, I will write it all. So we would have k counts omega t plus omega sine omega t from the first part of the cosine. And then we're introducing a 3 k sine omega t plus a minus a 3 omega cosine omega t. And that would be then the solution of the combined two equations. And so you don't need to redo the full work by using the superposition principle. So here, the key was just to recognize that the cosines and the sines are basically a real part and imaginary part of the complex number of exponential of i omega t. Again, it's just Euler formula. And using that as a shortcut to be able to kill two birds with one stone and solve the two equations by using only really one approach, which is just the integrating factor. And this ends the session for today. <laughs>